Chocolate chai, oh, Robos, chocolate chai, Robos, the spice tea, chocolate chai, but Robos is an amazing thing here in South Africa. We got some stuff. We got some, you know, in the fauna flora, I, the, you know, the, I don't know which one is fauna flora. I just throw that out there, put them together. People figure out something from the sea and something from the, anyway, got a lot of that stuff here. Really good. Chocolate chai. I love this tea. That's what I'm having this morning. Okay, I realized, oh, the last time I did a, last time, my last posting, I was talking about uh, uh, some travels I did and, 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 and stuff like that. And uh, what I was trying to say, well, one of the things I was, the name of the thing, something like, uh, I basically don't need, I don't want a DNA test, okay? There's a bunch, a bunch of reasons. I don't know what they do when they did DNA, but they probably have my DNA. They can go to any, you can go, this whole DNA thing, they can go to any laboratory, you take a blood test, something like that, and they got your DNA, so it doesn't matter you know, how the government does. But I don't want to cooperate. But the reason why I didn't need it, doesn't need it, don't need those ancestry, whatever DNA, you know, belonging to those companies or whatever, is because I know where I come from. How do I know where I come from? From my travels. And I told you all the, the stuff that I went to. I'll put the link right there if you want. It's a long one, like 30 minutes. But what I left out, and one of the countries I, I did mention was, uh, was I've been to Jamaica also. I mentioned that because all of the all the countries I've been to had something to do with essentials for, for for slavery. You know, Cuba and Jamaica was the first ports that they did, and then uh, then of course you know um, um, you know was then of course uh, 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 Brazil. You know, been to Brazil and and, da, da, da. Um, and then of course the uh, door of no return. Uh, you know, in Goriana, and I told you I almost got possessed, and people saved me, blah blah blah, blah all the rest of that stuff. What I did forgot to tell you, what I didn't say, was um, is that after that experience of going on that same night, I start I started crying. She rang up. Now, let me go back explain something to you. When I was born, about so, anyway, from the time I was three to about five and a half, I was in foster care uh, with my brother, um, St. Joseph by the Sea of Staten Island. Okay. And, and then when my mother contracted polio and da, 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 and my grandmother finally got a situation where she could bring us all together. So she got us out of there. And I clearly remember in uh, St. Joseph by the Sea being behind a cage and people just come and look like, like let's go, we'll take that kid, da, da, da. Anyways, one, one, one time we were, we were taken away. I don't want to say taken away. It's not adoption, but you know, they pay, the state pays you to take care of these, you know, foster kids or whatever it is. So uh, we were, we were, taken by uh, a woman uh, in Staten Island, I believe it was. This woman was very cruel, okay? Now, I was too young to go to school, but my brother, she would feed us like watered down oatmeal, saving money, so, you know, the money the state gives you money, she's saving it. And the story came out that she was actually trying to use that money to buy her house. Okay, but one incident, just give you one incident. Um, my, she had us in the basement, like, you know, the old cowboys in it, and had me and my brother, my brother's like two and a half years older than I, tied, tied, his birthday just passed in February, tied behind our back about this pole, back, back to back, and I was crying, and my brother said, he said, don't worry, Anthony, don't cry, he said, don't worry, he said, don't cry, Anthony, don't worry, I'll always take care of you, and that stopped me from crying. From that moment, until the time at Gory Island, I really didn't cry, okay, I never, Crying, oh, except for my when my grandmother passed in uh, in uh, eighty two. My grandmother passed. But that was that was a whole other thing. We'll leave that. But but I never really cried. You know what I mean? Like oh, da 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 da. But that. But but uh, I should tell you this. Years later, I always thought in my head that it was a white lady did this. But years later, it was a Jamaican woman. We're talking, you know, this was like the mid-50s. Anyway, back to the point. But I cried. I cried on the, I cried when I, when I left Gorilla and went back to my room, I cried. I, I was doing this interview, I cried. I was in my room and I cried. When I got on the plane coming back to the States, I cried. 
And since that moment, you know, I actually cry now. I mean, I'm, you know, I cry. I mean, I'm, I'm not like I was doing back then or for my grandmother's, you know, passing. But last night, where's the thing? I was watching, let me show you what I mean. Last night, I was watching a movie with my wife. Got one of it's one of those, I won't say date movies. Oh, well, we watched like that. This movie here, Collateral Beauty. You know, Will Smith, really good cast, amazing cast, Naomi Watts. It's a really, 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 really good cast. If you can ever check this film out, check this film out. So we watched that. And any, even a sappy movie, I saw it like, it could be an incident. I will, I will tear up. I'll tear up like a child of Oshun, you know what I'm saying? And so that's what I'm trying to say. So I, so I know, what I'm trying to say is I know that I was back in touch with my humanity because coming, going through the door of no return or going to the door of the door of no return, it brought me, it brought back to humanity. So either my ancestors were trying to grab me or they was giving me back my humanity. That's how I look at it. So let me, let me keep on going. So I get that out the way. But here's the thing. Uh, also in that thing, um, in that last posting, I mentioned the fact that uh, in this, in this, I don't want to say struggle. In this move, in this reality, in the ADOS reality, there's certain things happening. Of course, there's people who are going to snipe you or whatever. So I'm trying to give them. You know, it's like, it's like a little, it's like a, a, a 18 month old, you know, or two year old. They're always getting into something. Now you can go and stop yelling at them, <laughs> or you, or you can go there, stab them, or grab them, whatever, have that. Or you can say, oh. Oh, baby, don't do that. Here, I got something else for you. And you can gently, gently guide them off to someplace else they can do something else to get them out of that danger that they're in. I mean, there's a lot of ways to approach something, right? Now, what? Okay, there's a lot of ways to approach something. But here's my approach for all these folks that keep on trying to snipe at ADOS, whatever. Obviously, they have nothing to do. <laughs> I mean, they have nothing else to do. Now, let me just start with. I'm just going to deal with. Uh, let me just deal with two. Okay, since I got my, my African pouch. Look at African pouch. This was made from the guy in the my wife pimped it up. I like this one here because it has a, a cat there. And since I'm born in the year of the tiger, you know, anytime you have a cat, yeah, I'm there. Amen. So I have my, I have, okay, I have my, uh, how you, what you call it, pan African look right now. But I'm still ADOS because I have an ADOS mentality right now. I still use the pan Africanism. But, Here's the thing. Like I told uh, the, the the Haitian folks to wrap themselves in effect, and then what they need to do, they need to go fight the Clintons. You know, the, 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 those found that foundation that, that took a lot of stuff from. Instead of giving the money to, to Haiti with the, all the relief stuff, they did something else with it. And you know, they said, you know, so so your fight, we need you. ADOS needs you, but we don't need you to snipe at us. What we need you to do is deal with the Clintons. Okay, we need to destroy them once and for all because they have to, you know, just destroy them. Man. The other thing is, I don't know if you know what's happening right now. Let me get to that last. Um, I took a trip to, uh, I was in Italy. And the, the way you go, the way you go to Italy, you, you go, you do like a, a, what we call, um, you do a tour, a drinking tour. Okay? Well, let me put this light on. I'm going to drop it in the dark. I'm going to put my other light on just in case. Because I want you to see my lovely face. Okay. Uh, so, so you drink your way around Italy is what I'm trying to say. Now, one of the places I was in is uh, Taranto. It's, a, it's at the bottom of the really, whatever it is. And it was, uh, uh, it's where I found this, um, the wine, I think it's called a Primitivo. So like the first grape, because the first grape that came from, from Greece to, to, to Italy came, that was the first grape, and that's where they made wine out of it. So it's called a, a Primitivo, which is one of my favorite ones. I mean, I love Shiraz, but Primitivo is the very strong, very strong, very strong. Um, so I would go with that. But when I was there, because uh, I can't explain, but I, I didn't, I kept on being handed off to other people and staying with, other, with, with people. So when I was in Taranto, it's, 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 it's in Italy, oh, hey, we got the globe here. That's too small here. But in Italy, it's where, you know, it is like a boot. Well, it's where the arch, the, the, the heel meets the arch. Right? I don't know if you, oh, sorry. I don't know if you can see it. The heel meets the arch. Okay, that's enough. Oh, by the way, I know I digress. But this is, I didn't realize this is an excellent globe because it has the proper proportions of the country, of the continents. So you see how big Africa is, right? See how big Brazil is in South America? This is how it is. See how, you see how small Europe is? But these little countries here, 
control carved up this whole area here, all that shit. This, this is the this is the time in history we rectify the situation. Don't you understand? You pan Africanists, don't you understand that? You 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 you, you Christians, don't you understand that? I mean, look, I'm gonna get. Let me just finish with it. So one of the things I did in Italy when I got to um, Rome, I, I, I this was in, uh, in the mid '90s. Who I was Pope, I wrote the Holy See right? because they had just apologized for slavery. So I wrote the Holy See. I said, "That's really great that you apologize." I'm just paraphrasing. We apologize for safe slavery, um, but um, uh, apologies are not enough. You, you need to give up some some cash. I didn't say it that way, but you know, basically like like that, right? And you know, the Vatican has their own post office. So I mailed it right there. I suppose they got it someplace. Now here's the interesting thing, right? Let me feel, before I get to the Pan Africans, let me deal with the uh, the Christians first. Look, I don't know what kind of Christian you guys are, but uh, just last year, uh, uh, James James Crone, you know, the guy that wrote the Black Theology, you know, the Black Theology, the Black theologians, Liberation Theology, right? And uh, James James Crone, you gotta know him. He just died last year. <laughs> anyway. Was a, he was a, a Methodist. Okay, I get, I have this book. I got this down here in South Africa. It was written right 1923 or something like that. I'm just going to read just a little bit of editorial note that they have. This is the very first two things. It says, let me take this off. I quickly here. Methodism was introduced into South Africa by a few zealous Methodist soldiers. Zealous Methodist soldiers. Who arrived in a cape in a, in a cape um whatever? Let me let me stop right there. Well, because I don't want to go. Well, let me keep going on. Uh, with with the with the regiment in 1806, uh, Reverend Bar Barnabas Shaw, uh, the pioneer minister, arrived in uh, 1816 and commenced a noble work uh, on the western side of the country. Um, to the Reverend William Shaw belongs the honor of opening up the great native areas of, south, of southeastern Africa for the gospel and civilization. Mr. Shaw right, arrived in the country in 1820. On November 13, 1823, he set out from Grahamstown, they just renamed it to Americana, they renamed Grahamstown to Americana, it's now called Americana, um, to establish a cafeteria, a cafeteria capital K-A-F-F-R-A-R-I-A, -A, the first of a chain of Methodist mission stations, they are opening, uh, thereby opening a new chapter in the history of missions in South Africa. I bring that up and talking to, so he's a Methodist man. But j j so that's what happened. And these, they came with the Bible and the gun at the same time. This, you understand? This is, this is different than you know, often been taught. You know, first of all, you think the missions, the missionaries came first, and then, uh, well, maybe they did other places. They came first, and then the soldiers, did, and the missionaries, they went to write, they write back to the Holy See. You know, this is, this is happening, this is happening, and then the soldiers would read those things. Then they, they would, because missionaries were also mapping out the, the terrain and stuff like that. Here's the rivers, here's the, here's the most population like that. So the soldiers came and they knew exactly what they were going to do. So this works tandem, you know. Okay. So unless you, no, let, me, let me keep on going. So. So, so what's happening now? I don't know if you know this, but the NBA, I'm sorry, but the NBA is starting a basketball league in Africa. I put it in another post. Maybe I'll, maybe I get that post. I'll put the link there too. Now, if the missionaries came and did what they did, and remember, religion is like a weird thing because there's that hard colonialism with the guns, and then there's that soft colonialism with 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 like with like like um, sports and entertainment. So sports like a soft kind of colonialism, you know what I mean? It gets in your, and, 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 and entertainment stuff like gets in your brain. So so you, you colonize in your brain with that stuff like that. Um, but the religion I put someplace in the, in both, you know what I mean? Well, maybe it's more mental like that. So so um, uh, those missionaries, they basically, well, they did what they did. Something interesting happened right now because the NBA has opened up a basketball league here, which all the billionaires opened up a basketball league in several countries. And guess who's in charge of that? You want me to guess? They're gonna the face of that is gonna be that snake, Barack Hussein Obama. You heard me right. Look it up. 
they're going to start a basketball league. We basically, and it's going to be dotted all over the certain countries. And if you really notice that the, the, these countries will have strategic, uh, strategic value to the U.S. or mineral value, mainly, namely oil. So even if they don't get Venezuela, they're going to be in Africa. Believe me. Oh, you don't believe me? Believe me, that's what they do. So, what I'm saying is that you Pan-Africanists, they are their continued attack of Africa. You are Pan-African. You're supposed to be working on a global level. Don't worry about ADOS. We're dealing with the local, with the flag. We're wrapping ourselves in the, in the flag, in the American flag, so the American, other American flag don't see where you're going in and, 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 and get what to do, right? Your mission is not to attack us. It's not to degrade us or whatever have you. Your mission is to continue what, continue what we do. We, we're just a little cog. We're actually under you know, Pan-Africanism, if you want to put it that way, you know what I mean? So, you got stuff to do. First of all, you need to go to make sure the Holy See gets ready, make sure the Holy See gives, gives all that stuff back, you know, all the pay, get their reparations, because they already, already apologized. And then, plus, you have to make sure that, that Barack and the, and the gang, all them billionaire people, you remember when we first got a thing, he was flying around, he, you know, he, he's skydiving on the back of, of, of that, that that virgin airline, you know, whatever, you know what I'm talking about. So this is your mission right now. Why are you up Why are you spending time dealing with ADOS for some reason? I don't know why. When your mission is you still got, you still got things to do. You're taking away, you got things to do. We got to deal with things like, 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 like the black people in, in Bernie's and in, in all these presidential candidates' things because they have to make sure their presidential ca If you are a black person working on a presidential campaign right now, no matter whose it is, you are, and you, you, you're supposed to be studying ADOS, you go, go to the website, www.ados101.com, and you are supposed to know what those documents, you, if you know Yvette or, you know, Miss Yvette or, 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 or Attorney Moore, then you need to be talking to them and getting a real insight of what's going on and then get to your candidates and make your candidates do what's supposed to make your candidates do the right thing to quote Spike Lee you understand what I'm saying that's your mission if you're in those if you work that's your mission if you can't turn your candidate around by the South Carolina primary right you have failed in fact you might as well just leave just leave because you know your candidate is not for black people or specifically American descendant of chattel slavery that's what we're saying okay now, let me stop here, cause you know I'll get all worked up and stuff like that. So, so that's it. So, so uh, uh, peace and blessing on, on the Reverend uh, James Cone. I, I didn't actually realize that he died last year. Actually, I just thought I heard it like that. And uh, we all got things to do. Do what you're supposed to do. Sniping somebody else that's also dealing dealing with liberation is not what you're supposed to do. It's just a little note, giving you some direction, getting you away from this other stuff, and giving you some positive. From me, T, from the Pattersons, taking the train to Tibet. Letting you know what I only suspect right here from a desk of the ADOS. <laughs>